Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and uh, I'm here for another uh, Thought Leadership Zcast. Uh, today, I'm joined by Sanjay Pana, WebEx Product Management Leader. Sanjay, why don't you say hello to everybody and, and tell us a little bit about what you do. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Zias, uh, for having a conversation with me today. And I'm a product manager in uh, WebEx uh, world and part of my charter is managing access to the markets and you know i address the very very different requirements that come across the globe with respect to compliances privacy and everything else that is thrown our way to make sure a market is successful yeah we're going to be talking security privacy compliance all those things um it's funny how those words kind of get mixed up sometimes uh with one of the people use them almost interchangeably uh, before we get started, though, I do want to give a quick shout out to eWeek. Uh, eWeek is uh, my media partner. All Zcasts are done in conjunction with the eWeek eSpeaks program. Um, and the topic of data privacy is, you know, I, I find an interesting one, especially in the collaboration space, because uh, companies are really challenged to, to figure out how to protect their data, especially as we move increasingly to a hybrid environment, hybrid work, right? I think um, uh, I did a survey last year and uh, I asked business leaders actually how they change their spending priorities based on the pandemic and security and privacy were actually way above everything else. So more money got rerouted into that as part of IT investments area uh, since the pandemic began. And that makes sense because obviously in a hybrid work environment, we send uh, everybody home and uh, we have less control over our data and in a lot of ways, you know, shadow IP and things like that have become very big. So um, just from a high level perspective, Sanjay, um, what are some of the things businesses need to think about to keep data safe and out of the hands of bad actors today? Yeah, and you know, overall, just you know, the, we we see exactly the same thing in our world too, right? I mean, the the, the spending increasing on data and privacy. Not only the spending rates, is the confusion increasing too? I mean, do do I have to deal with compliances? Do I have to deal with data residency? Do you have to deal with uh, um, you know certifications? Like, what do, what what does an organization do to keep them safe and protected? Right, and and we we tend to say uh, you know first and foremost, it's it's very important for organization to understand what's the outcome for for them what's the right outcome for them what are their goals that they want to achieve and and forget about the buzzwords that are happening in the industry for for a little bit and and focus on what is the requirement for them and once they have the clear requirements the rest of the steps become easy i mean there are frameworks to help go through the rest of the steps as well but Unless the goals are clear for the organizations, and look, the businesses are unique. Uh, 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 an organization's business would be very unique, and it's not same as everybody else down the line, down the street, right? So, so you gotta figure out what are you doing, what's applicable to you, and you know, and how you you know, and and what's the what's the outcome you want to achieve, and once that is clear. We can, you know, it's it's pretty easy with the focus on the frameworks to kind of get you to the answers that you need in order to meet them. Yeah, sometimes I think though the companies don't really know what it is the outcome is they want to achieve other than protect their data, right? So uh, that alone uh, can be kind of tricky. So uh, now if you know we are you are with WebEx and if we start thinking about security and privacy within cloud collaboration itself, that's a much different challenge, right? And in fact, I think. If uh, when you talk to people about, when I talk to people about these collaboration tools we use, I think it's easy to th think of these things as just kind of a CUC me type application, but there's a lot of um, very sensitive information passed across these today, especially since the pandemic began. And I know, in fact, Cisco, some of the mergers and acquisitions that Cisco did during the pandemic, you did, you know, almost completely over WebEx. And so that's, you know, that's about as sensitive the type of data you get. So Within this realm of cloud collaboration, how should companies be thinking about security and privacy and what steps can they take to make sure that they're protected? Yeah, great. That's, that's great question, Jesus. And, and the world changed right in front of our eyes and you know, you know, things that were sensitive are happening over the platform too. So, so clearly this question is becoming not only, this is mission critical question. How do I, 
how do I protect myself, right? And and what do I do with respect to my protection? We, we like to think in terms of three key pillars, right? First of all, like I was talking earlier, find out what's important for you. It, it goes on. If, if you take one step deeper, it's like, hey, what is, what is my organizational data governance policies? Can I describe what data is sensitive, what data is not sensitive? Can I describe clearly on who should be able to collaborate with who else? And then when I have this sense, can I actually reflect these policies or the governance requirements that I have into the platform and tools and collaboration uh, uh, capabilities that I'll deploy in my organizations, right? When when I can, I can describe the policies and I can enforce it very clearly when people were coming to office, I mean, their badge flashing and all that stuff could have told where to go and where not to go. Uh, but now that people are online, how do I reflect those policies into my collaboration aspect, right? Who can talk to who? What content can they exchange? Can they, can they, can, can I enforce all of these things, right? And that is, that is a significant uh, amount of, I mean, uh, you know, uh, work right over there on describing what are my organizational governance needs. And then depending on the nature of your business, Zeus companies may have the regulatory uh, uh, compliances as well to, to meet. You know, if you are in healthcare, there would be HIPAA. If you are in other businesses, there would be, um, you know, other regulatory compliances um, applicable to you as well. So you gotta, you gotta make sure you got to make sure you are part of it. And then the third part that you, you got to make sure is the, the technology or the platforms you're using for collaboration, you you can actually engage in the trust. You can actually trust your provider and safeguarding your data. So these are the key, key principles that we like to advise our customers. And, um, uh, you know, and, and, I, I, and I love to always kind of describe those to anybody I talk to. Yeah, I like the way you broke that down into you know three simple steps, right? Organizational data governance, regulatory compliance, and then understand your provider and be able to trust them. And I think if I were, you know, in some of the conversations I have with business leaders and IT pros, just the concept of trying to build a security framework around your collaboration uh, strategy is so big, it's almost like a moonshot initiative and it can almost paralyze you, right? And I've had, I've, I've often described IT projects as companies need to think about chip shots and not moonshots. If you try and solve for that moonshot coming out of the gate, you will paralyze yourself and not be able to do it. But if you do it one step at a time, you know, then you can. And so, you know, thanks for that. I think it broke it down nicely. Now, you did mention uh, governance. And I think the term, you know, it's interesting, the term governance is bandied about and almost created interchangeably with security and compliance sometimes. But it's not really the same thing. Right. And so can you maybe double click on data governance and shed some light about data governance and cloud collaboration and what that means to you know, today's businesses? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and see is what uh, you know, if we, if we touch that topic, like um, organizational data governance and, and applicability to that in, in the collaboration environment, like I was saying earlier, I mean, um, you know, when people were live in the office, you know, somebody told you not to do this, it would be possible you put rules and regulations over emails and, you know, put some firewalls across your stuff and things were things were protected. But now it's like, you know, I talk to secure information security leaders, you know, every day and they tell me they're not, they're worried about the attacks on their system and external breaches and everything and they got to protect for that. But now the mounting concern for them is, what is shared out of their organization because they don't seem to happen to have the control over um, over their their own data, right? It's it's your data. You would think that you have control over it. You can place it wherever. But now that employees are um, you know having collaboration online, it's like how how do I enforce what, what's what's uh, you know what's sensitive what's not sensitive who do you talk to who do you take out to right so so the need is to first of all be able for to for for your ability to kind of kind of be you know whatever your processes and 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 you know governance model was 
prior to lives going online to be able to continue into that model. That's a, that's life easy. You knew it's your data. You knew what was sensitive before. You knew how people worked before. You just want to go ahead and implement that as the lives went online, right? And you you know what is sensitive, what is not sensitive. You can tell that people should not, these groups of people cannot be talking to each other or this data should not be going externally. But how do you implement that on a, on a technology system? And that's what you got to watch out for as you go ahead and, and, and you know, select your provider or select your technology to see, can you do these things? Can you um, ensure that data that you have called out properly and the people that you have called out properly and the tools that you have called out properly are secured enough and they are not violating against the policy that you're trying to reflect. And if they are, there is a quick resolution to it, right? What if the violation occurred? What would you do in the in the in the in the uh, live world versus a virtual world? I mean, the, the the data which has leaked out, for example, should be immediately removed. I'm just taking examples, and the, your policy may be different, or you know, administrators should be notified for the violations occurring. And you know, this is exactly what should happen in uh, the online world too, right? And and so so that governance model, you you have to think that. The, the the organizational policies for your collaborations, you are able to reflect that in the collaboration technology that you're using in, in, in house. Yeah, you know, the, those are some interesting points you brought up. And uh, now when, it, and, and by the way, I used to be in corporate IT myself. And so trying to get users to obey the, uh, you know, don't send this to this person or whatever. So, boy, if it's not automated, it's almost impossible to do. But uh, what you talked about was a lot of kind of internal governance issues and companies thinking about their data. But there are a lot of regulations, as you talked about, too, uh, in different industries. And so what are the different kinds of external government requirements that companies may need to contend with, you know, within this realm of, of collaboration? Yeah, and, and this is uh, this is uh, this is a. Dynamics, you know, there is sentiment around the sentiment around the data handling is changing across the globe with with different things happening in Europe. We had um, different dynamics driving the data handling requirements, right? And and depending on the nature of the business you may be in or region of the world you may be in, there would be regulatory requirements applicable to you. Um, and um, U.S. public sector, for example, has completely different requirements. You know, data has to be on Kana's, um, um environments and, con you know, continental U.S. and can't leave and all this stuff, whereas you go to Europe and, you know, there are different requirements coming in. I mean, I talked to, I talked to, uh, there was a recent survey that Cisco did, uh, privacy benchmark study that they did, and 92% of the respondents said that uh, uh, data localization is important to them. And obviously, it's driven by the different uh, dynamics, but they, they want data to be closer to you. They want it in the cloud, but they wanted to be, be, have it closer to them and have more control over it, right? So so that's a yeah. shift. That's a shift in the dynamics, and, and you have to be pretty mindful of that when you are choosing a provider or selecting a technology that it provides you um, that kind of capabilities that, that your regulation would require. Yeah, my, my research has been reflected that too. In fact, I think now that we've all had time, you know, the, it, realistically, the first wave of, you know, remote work was driven by people just panicking and buying whatever tools they could, right, to get people to work. Now that we've had time to step back and rethink our strategies, I think this is where a lot of those data localization, you know, demands are coming from. And uh, so if you think about, you, you know, data localization, we have different regulations, uh, certainly from the U.S. and Europe. Uh, I know Canada has their own unique ones. I'm actually Canadian um, myself, so I'm a good old Canadian boy here. So uh, I know the Canadian regulatory environment is, is quite different. There's a lot of uniqueness there. And that drastically affects your cloud collaboration decisions, right? So you got to make sure your provider's got, you know, local presence in certain areas and not all of them do. And so, um, so there's lots and lots of stuff happening in different parts of the world. How is Cisco WebEx responding to this and helping their customers out? 
Yeah, uh, funny you, you call out Canada, and especially you are from Canada. Look, we we have been there. We have had data center in Canada since two thousand and fourteen, and and we already meet the regulations like PIPDA and FIPA, which are the piece of uh, legislative pieces over there, and uh, federal regulations, right? And um, and in fact, in just a few weeks, uh, Webex will be delivering two new data centers in Canada, which which now gives the choice to customers to host their meetings data. Um, over there, keep the user profiles over there, keep all the analytics usage and troubleshooting over in Canada, uh, and basically have the data residency from that perspective. We um, we are already there in Australia, again, providing the data residency. You know, you you have the meeting uh, meetings data, you can host it over there, um, uh, you know, and enjoy the data residency. And all these are choices. Since uh, last September, we all also provided a data center pair in EU, and you can host all your services, meetings, messaging, calling, contact center. Um, you know, you, you customers have a choice of hosting everything in EU and managing the data completely over there, right? So we, so it's it's like we we have the WebEx has the presence globally. And we get very degrees of requirements. I mean, customers come in with respect to, hey, I don't have a regulatory requirement or a data management requirement, but when I go and attend my meeting, I don't want my users to go over the internet and go over to a different uh, part of the world just to join the meeting. I mean, that that kind of spoils the media uh, experience for my users. So we, we provide and go and address that requirements to provide the fantastic user experience irrespective of which part of the world you are in and from there on the requirements keep hey i want to have more data closer to me for which we are responding um, across the world you know i talked about a few examples over here canada australia um eu and and we are working on more and more um uh, you know data residency kind of solutions for across the globe we we also uh, deliver a lot of and other customers come in and you know the regulations kind of drive them to have certain certifications and certain compliances to to continue to the, do the business so across the world we are committed to meeting those uh, requirements and certifications and we we are one of the vendors who have the most compliances under our belt right a very comprehensive uh, 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 compliances and certifications program. And then there are specific sectors like U.S. public sector or global public sector. They would have a very drastic kind of requirements with respect to not only where my data is kept, but where, how, who and who who handles my data and what credentials do they have. And that drives a newer set of capabilities for us to provide, right? And um, so, so Cisco is looking at uh, not only looking at driving the solutions globally for meeting these varied degree of, of needs. So, um, you know, customers should just look at that and see whether their providers, when they're selecting, what are their needs and whether these needs which are coming from the regulations are actually being met, uh, be it data residency or privacy or security. Yeah, and so uh, th thanks for the and congratulations on opening those two data centers in Canada. I know in that market itself, that's a big issue to have your data kept locally especially when you get into the public sector, you know, the big Canadian banks, things like that, they all want to make sure their data is kept, uh, kept local. And more and more, I actually think that's going to become a requirement you know, in almost every country. So your ability to scale WebEx, I think, is, uh, you know, sort of critically important here. Um, now, I want to so, uh, wrap up with one last question. Uh, you had mentioned one of the steps, uh, you know, to helping create a secure collaboration environment is to trust your provider. Right. And so this or find a provider you can trust. And this is not an easy thing to do. Right. Like most most of the collaboration ministers can check a bunch of boxes, but you got to dig down deep to understand, you know, what exactly that check mark means. And so uh, for our audience, uh, how do they go about uh, evaluating the providers and how does a company like WebEx demonstrate trust? Yeah, it's a. It's a big word, isn't it? You, you got you got to trust, and I mean, it almost invokes your emotions and feelings right away. How do I? Well, the whole concept of trust is you shouldn't need to demonstrate, right? <laughs> but I think in, you know. But I think in, in this space, I think you do need to demonstrate it. So you know, as you go through customer pieces, how do how do you guys do that? 
yeah yeah and and it's a so look uh, you know it, it's not about one thing trust is not going to come in from one thing it's all aspects right uh, uh, and but when when i think about it i i try to break it down into the 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 product the product itself which is going to give you the the capabilities and everything else and uh, and the principles and the, which kind of drives your responses to some of the things which are going to happen not only today but in future right and then commitment demonstrated commitment to uh to uh, these principles and the product right so if you think about product for example you know data protection security uh, governance privacy all this has to be integrated into the product we we talked about a lot of examples your organization policies have to be met and and reflected into the collaboration product your you know your or regulatory requirements coming out of your regional regulations or uh, you know other things you know have to be met and you know security has to be all of these requirements have to be baked into the product at the time of design at the time of thinking at the time of conceptualization they can't be bolted on it can't be oh i got to go have customer in that region I'm, i'm i'm trying to play and hence bolt on some requirement it doesn't work that way it has to be baked in and surface out in the product and so so that's that's key part of the product and that shows very clearly right things like end to end encryptions and all that stuff it, it just has to be baked into the product end to end kind of scenario so that's part one the second part is the principle the the principles are it's it's the values that that a provider has that will guide um you know the providers act into into this more dynamic world right and and uh, transparency for example or accountability and and um uh, respect to customers data these are the principles that will guide any provider and it, it has to be baked into the organization's dna itself right this is not something that individual employees can choose and act on that individual hero, heroism works definitely has a, a lot of value but the dna has to be uh, responsible for building and adhering to these principles right and and that's where the transparency for example how do you how do you tell you know if something goes wrong or uh you know what are your practices how do you handle data how transparent can a provider be you know how how transparent they are what are they telling you how are they engaging you in what if something were to go wrong your data was accessed mishandled or something how forthcoming will they be that's the that's a principle the the that has to be baked in the the respect for data rights i mean this is something for example yeah you you said the, again these are the principles that not only account for the handling of the data today and you you were able to see something but things the dynamic nature of the technology ai for example you know it's taking such a prominent role in collaboration now now how would a provider go or engineers go or support engineers go or your entire organizations will go and address the need or the address the handling of the data that is generating out of the ai you know it has to be guided by the principles so those principles have to be in place right and then then commitment um uh, to to demonstrate right and and that's where uh, you know the provider uh, should be able to demonstrate as well and you know they 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 have to be consistently rising up to the challenge you can't see the future but you can see the past right and that becomes a deterministic factor here is like how do how do has the provider given me constant uh benchmarks over the period of time as the dynamics change responded to the needs of the market of particular segment for data privacy handling and security did it change uh, across fast enough to make a difference you know and and how much does a provider go above and beyond the the bare minimums right for example webex um, you know we we always have a principle over here to not just do the bare minimum go above and beyond it i mean for example for us government we deliver a lot of federal certifications and others but we we always go beyond the the bare minimum compliance i mean things like and and you know when when we talk about these things as you tie yourself into the security paradigms and parameters and the and um, and the realms that are defined by regulations and everything often time what happens is the if if those commitments to going beyond is not there often times what you end up doing is or seeing is that your 
capabilities or the you know your experiences that you are giving to your users or the productivity that you would want to think that often gets compromised because you know you put the security realm and all of a sudden you realize hey what i was thinking or wanting is not relevant there anymore because i put security on it and these things have to go together it's not like we're trying to take away something it's like we're trying to add on we are giving you security data privacy data handling all the things that you require to manage your business successfully but along with all the capabilities that were required to do for you to have a seamless collaboration um you know and 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 the protection that that comes along with it so that's that's the i would i would say that's how we define trust i mean look at the product uh, capabilities that are built big ten not bolt down the principles that drives the organizations and the commitment to those principles and commitment to go above and beyond yeah well it's product commitment or product principles and commitment uh you know there's no question i think that gives webex a bit of an advantage being part of the bigger cisco you know i know doing things like uh just becoming fedramp compliant right that or achieving fedramp that is a long expensive process and something that just I'm not a lot of smaller providers are going to be willing to do right to to incur that kind of expense and so I think that's an area where Cisco's always had an advantage in fact uh year after year when I look at customer sat scores and when I look at you know people's satisfaction with webex you know sometimes you you certainly ebb and flow as far as features go you know things like that but certainly on the security side Cisco's always been very well regarded so I I you know I I totally get that so anyways uh, Sanjay I think that brings us to the end of our time I want to thank you for joining me. I want to, you know, to thank you for helping clear up a little bit of the mystery around these terms of security, compliance, privacy, governance, right? We throw them all into a big bucket we use, and we incorrectly often use them interchangeably. So uh, that was fantastic. Yeah, thank you, uh, Zias, for having me. It was a great conversation. It's always a great conversation with you. And uh, again, this this was very specific to privacy and I enjoyed it. Thank you. So on behalf of Sanjay Khanna, I'm Zias Caravalla. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to click the subscribe and I'll see you next time on Zcast.